and uh, we're behind the scenes at the Cambridge uh, University of Museums again, and at this time we're at the Cedric Museum of Earth Sciences, or actually more specifically, we're in the in the stores yeah, yeah. Uh, of, of Cedric Museum, and I'm here with uh, Rianne as well, uh, and you're a conservator. That's I am, yeah, I'm a conservation student with Durham University, and right. I'm working in Cambridge at the moment. And a conservator yeah. means that you conserve... Yeah, so we, so we look like after this. things, we try and protect them, we try and slow down decay and make sure that things are around for people to look at in the future. Fantastic. Right, so with Rianne, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be learning about, well, all I've been told, it's a very bony fish. Am I allowed to touch this? Yeah, okay. yeah, no, 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 no. So there we go. This is some of it. We've got lots of different parts and we'll be talking about it and showing you uh, some of the pieces in a little bit and uh, we'll be asking your questions as well. Oh yes, that's nice. Uh, let's get some of that, Richard. Uh, uh, there you go. We'll be asking some of your questions as well. So stick your questions down below um, in the comments. Remember to like and share too because we want as many people as possible uh, to see uh, this Facebook Live broadcast. I tell you what, should we just have a look around as well? Because this is just fascinating the stores we're in at the moment. Um, so you gave us just a look there. So we've got what we've got here. We've got loads of sort of dinosaur stuff. Uh, we've got, do you know what that is over there? Uh, so he's a, bit, a big bison skull. A big bison skull. <laughs> a big skull. bison skull, yeah. Oh, so right. he, he was actually from the Cambridge area. Oh, wow. Uh, so this is the sort of thing that would have, uh, that would have roamed, roamed this area. Wow. Uh, you know, a long time ago. Well, okay, I'm, in a way, I'm glad. Well, actually, I kind of would like it'd be cool if it was here now, but I'm glad I'm not face to face with one. Yeah, no, you, would, you wouldn't want to see the size yeah. of his horns. You wouldn't. You wouldn't have to. No. Right. Well, there we go. So these are some of the other things. I'm sure at some point these will be on display in the Cedric Museum uh, too. But we're going to be looking at this, and I've been told. Uh, well, I've been told it's a very bony fish. I don't know exactly what that means. And I've been told it's 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 hot off the press. You guys have only just got. This, yeah, he's, right? he's, he's very new, so um, we, we affectionately we've named him Little John right. um, because he is uh, he's a Leedsichthus problematicus, and this, was, right. this is the largest bony fish that we know about so far. So, so the fact that so what was that? Sorry, a Leedsichthus problematicus. Right. Okay. So there we go. So ni nice big Latin names for you. Um, wow. He was uh, a, a very a very large filter feeding fish. Yeah. Who uh, swam around in the uh, in the Jurassic yeah. um, era? He was about 155 million years ago. He would have swam with plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs yeah. and all you know the, the big names. But we we don't know very much about him because we've not found very many specimens of him at all. Yeah. So it's really exciting to have another one. Um, Peterborough Museum has one, and it's got yeah. its own website. If you want to go to right. bigjurassicfish.com, which there I'm sure go. will be Big going out on, uh, on social media, yeah. you can find out more about theirs. But our one is particularly exciting because we've got things like these. Um, these are skull fragments. Um, so they're, you know, big bony plates from his head. And we've never seen these type of things before. So that's why it's really yeah. exciting so we can learn so many things from it. So all these different, we've got loads of different things here. So I'm just going to show, uh, hold some of them up so we can, uh, so oh, that's a bit crumbly. It is, is a bit okay? crumbly. So this, uh, this is the matrix that the, uh, that the fossil uh, came in. This uh, is kind of right, the okay, mud and good. the shells that it would have right. been encased in. So these are all different go. bones uh, to, from this one uh, this, this, this one creature is that right yeah yeah wow. so he was uh, so he's got lots and lots of different things oh, right. some more there as well on. yeah we've got lots of stuff so too. can you tell us what some of these things are so what's this big bit here first so this so this is a bony plate from his skull right um, so this would have been you know forming part of its head and from this you can see lots of bits where uh, various blood vessels would have gone in so this sort of tells us about how they how they evolved and how mm. they came from that. We've and what else? Yeah, what have we got? What's so, this here? So, so that this was is, the stuff it was kind of in. Yeah, so this is what's called the matrix and right. this is like the, the mud and the bits of shell and the, the right. debris that it gets sort of, that the, the, when this fish died that it got buried in and this is what's mm. preserved it. So this is Oxford clay and you can see it's quite crumbly. The grey bit is the Oxford clay and the white bits are mm. uh, fossilised shells. This can tell the type of animals that lived with him which is brilliant. Excellent. And then, and what else have we got very quickly? So we've got these here. These, what are more, they? these are more bits from his skull. So more these from are the just skull. Like various bits. Okay. This, this is a bit of his gill. Gill? So, yeah. What is a gill exactly? So it's uh, the thing that um, fish use to breathe in the water. Oh, so right. when they go okay. through, the, the water passes over it and they extract yeah. oxygen. And um, this is a gill raker. Um, okay. And um, they would have used these to filter um, small plankton and similar oh. organisms. And, that, and that's what they would have ate. Similar to. Um, uh, a blue whale, whale sharks, um, th things like that um, today. Right. They were this very, very big, so 16 metres long, 
but 18 tiny uh, 16 little little, that's crazy isn't it yeah. so that's why it's called little john because little he's john, absolutely because he's so big yes and yeah. also um he when we when he was excavated he was excavated just outside of peterborough right so he is he, he's a local okay he's local. <laughs> that's good there we go um, there we go yeah. oh, very good um and he, he was taken to nottingham where uh, mike challen was the uh, the gentleman who excavated him um, and so it was kept at uh, Mike's home. And uh, when when Mike passed away, his family um, donated it to the museum so that paleontologists right. can use it and uh, and learn more about it. And, and, and Rich was telling me before, it was actually found in a garage. It was in, it was like yes. it was in his garage. Is that right? So yes, it was, it was, kept, so it was kept in his garage. Yeah. Um, so it stayed there since the, the early two thousands oh, right. um, before it came here. So it was, it was part of my job was to take it out of the cases that it was kept in in his garage and was to put it in. Uh, clean it up and put it in the, in the museum. Well, we're going to, in a moment, I'm going to ask you some more questions about how this was actually conserved and that sort of thing. Because I find it kind of amazing, really. This was in the ground and we've got to, you've got to, I guess, conserve it because then yeah. we're able to study it. We and that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly yeah, exactly. So in a moment, can I ask a bit more about that? But remember, if you've got any questions, sit them in the comments and then we can answer those. Uh, well, I say we can answer those questions. Yeah. I can't answer those questions, but Rianne can answer those questions. Um, and uh, also uh, like and shares as well, because we want lots of people yeah. to uh, to see this and get the chance to go behind the scenes. It's not every day yeah. you get the chance to do that. It's, well, I guess you yeah, get to do good. it a lot, but it's not, yeah, it's not, the, the, it's not the, the, the opportunity. I don't get the opportunity to do that very often. Yeah, and I presume good. lots of you guys at, at home don't get that opportunity as well. So, um, you were telling me about this first of all, weren't you? And, and saying, have, these were bl blood vessels here, is yeah, that right? Yeah, so, so various things. And wow. you, you can see these on sort of on modern animals yeah. as well, but you can, can kind of, um, so sort of where, where the blood supply goes goes into mm -hmm. bones and um, sort of, you know, enable, it gives it the nutrients that it needs to live. Uh, right. And um, so and they leave sort of uh, traces on there as well. And you can tell where things like ligaments and muscles mm -hmm. connect. And obviously this is really important for understanding how the fish evolved. So you can see where it had where it had muscle attachments, how big these th sort of things were. So you can tell if you can see how big its jaw muscles were, then maybe you can know how how much it could bite. You know, th th oh, things right. like this. They can uh, the smallest details can tell you can tell you a lot of things. So when you first when you were sort of trying to conserve this, were things like the blood vessels and stuff were they visible? Was it kind of difficult no, to? He, so what state was it in then? Basically, so he was, first of all? it was pretty much the same as it is now, but right. a lot dustier. Right. Okay. Um, so it, had, it, it accumulated a lot of dust. So that right. needed um, brushing off so that you could see it and we can handle it without getting dust on so our fingers. So how do you brush it? Are we just talking like a normal sort of brush? Yeah, use a, use a soft oh, paper, right. a soft okay. paper brush kind of to go yeah. through and we have, uh, we have uh, air extraction to sort of sweep it away so that we're not breathing in too much. A bit of, bit of health and safety there. Oh, right. But, uh, but yeah, so just a nice soft brush to get it on um, so that we don't damage the fossil, but we get, we get rid of the... Uh, so it sounds so it sounds fairly doable so so far. So you kind of brush it off, and make sure you're yeah. well ventilated. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, but then what else do you do? So you're brushing off all the dust and things. Yeah. Then so what's next? The problem with this particular right. fossil was uh, because of the type of um, clay that it was buried in. It's very nutrient rich, and that can mean right. it can suffer from something called pyrite disease or pyrite decay. What's that? So this is where it affects the minerals pyrite and marcasite. Um, and it's when and when they uh, they oxidize the sulfide component of them oxidizes and makes ferrous sulfide, which when when this when this forms, it's maybe about this big, mm -hmm. but when it absorbs water from the surrounding atmosphere, it makes mineral hydrates and it grows like that and it sort of can push things out. So if it forms in the middle of the fossil, it can literally shatter them oh, from right. within, which is obviously that's not ideal. That's no, not you what don't we want. want. That. So but we were looking with this one is that most of it was on the surface, uh -huh. um, which meant that we can brush it away and then I can use a, a very sharp um, tungsten carbide needle to um, and what's that? Is that like, literally a need? What does that look it like? It is. So it's uh, so it comes as a, a, a rod uh -huh. of uh, of the methyl tungsten carbide, and you sharpen it to a point, wow. and uh, and sort of use it to to pick the bits off under the microscope, which is uh, I think the photo that we shared on uh, social media. Oh. You can see me in the process doing that. Oh, so, so make sure that you have a look at that if you uh, yeah, haven't already. So you've basically got a microscope, and you've got a sort of really sharp needle and you're really delicately sort of scratching yeah. away cleaning this up. Is yeah, that, is and this is to, to remove the, the pyrite mineral so that it then can't start expanding and mm. forming its hydrates. And one of the things when it gets really bad is it can form sulfuric acid. Right. And there have been examples in the past from various museums all, all over the world where you can have pools of sulfuric acid forming on the surface and this can, it can not only damage the fossil, it can burn through the drawers, it can burn through any records that are with it, any bits of paper. So it's really <sighs> nasty stuff and not, yeah, some, yeah. not something that we really want to have. So we want to try and treat it and make sure that this, 
this doesn't happen. All right. So are there any stages after that in terms of conserving some sort of big piece like this? Yeah. Uh, you've uh, you've kind of scratched away, you've cleaned it up, you've got rid of that uh, really nasty uh, stuff yeah. that can burn through records yeah, and all that sort of exactly thing. So. Um, what's next? What do you do next? So mainly we want to keep it um, in a sort of stable humidity environment. Okay. So we, we don't want it to get to, too damp, we mm -hmm. don't want to get it to get too dry. Mm -hmm. um, so this sort of means that it stays happy, the decay doesn't start up again. And we also want to keep it physically protected, which mm -hmm. is what these boxes are made of, uh, are for. So they're padded with um, Ooh, a yeah. foam called plastazote foam. Um, and the uh, walls are made of corex. And this is all conservation safe material. So we know it doesn't, it doesn't break down, it doesn't give off any nasty mm -hmm. chemicals. And it means that if they get a little bit knocked, then the box will take the knocking mm -hmm. and the padding will take the knocking and the, the actual specimens themselves will be okay. okay. They also sit in, uh, in these uh, wooden cases oh, yes. that they've got behind so that uh, so they sort of you know, keep the dust off so they've got a nice lid so that kind of stops it getting dusty again. So it means that you know, future Rian won't have to go around and, yes. and give them a dust again. But that's good, so you're saving future cells. Yeah, exactly, and, and that's quite a lot of what, pre uh, what yeah. uh, conservation is, is that we try and prevent, um, prevent the bad things from happening because once it's happened, it's, it can be quite difficult to recover okay. from it. So if we stop it from happening in the first place, Everyone's oh, happy. Everyone's excellent. a winner. And is there any difference? So th these sort of big pieces here, that's what you did there. Is, when we've got these smaller pieces, do, is the conservation uh, different anyway, or is it a similar sort of thing? It's pretty much the same, but a lot more fiddly. Because okay. if, if you can see, uh, you see how small these pieces are, um, is dusting each one of those individually, is, uh, it, ta it takes a long time. Mm. Um, so each, each bag like this would take about between half an hour and 40 minutes mm. to do. Um, and there are around 70 um, okay. sort of bags, sort of this size, so it takes a, so you know, you can, you can do the maths and extrapolate it out, and it's yeah. a, so it's kind of, it's, it's a time consuming thing, but yeah, in, in principle, it's, uh, it's much the same. Oh, great, excellent. Uh, as, as I say, just a reminder again, like and, like and share this. Also, if you've got a question, ask it now, or if you're watching this and actually we've already gone out live, stick the question down there anyway, because actually, uh, Rian, really, are you happy to yeah, answer yeah, yeah. you know, I'll, pop I'll in tomorrow through your or whatever comments, and yeah, uh, I'll, uh, answer your yeah. questions there? Yeah, yeah, good, that oh, that's good. So, uh, yeah, so put questions at, at any time, basically. Um, so, uh, you've kind of told us how it's conserved. Uh, so. I guess I kind of think it's really cool, like a 16 metre fish. That sounds really fascinating. But actually, why is it, why is it important to conserve this? Stuff? So we, we want to keep these things so that people can learn from them in the future. Okay. So things like, I'm, I'm not a paleontologist, uh -huh. so conservation is my specialism. So it really fascinates me, the amazing things people can learn. So right. if we look at this, uh, this little gill rakers, this is the things that it would use, that it would use to eat. So this, that's a gill raker. A gill raker. What do you mean yeah. by it, use, it uses it to it? it just so, it, so when, so it when the um, the water passes over it and it has lots of little microscopic plankton in it, right. and these get captured by it in some way. So we're still not entirely sure how it did it, and this is why things like this are so important. Right. So from this we can tell the amount of plankton that it would have eaten, and if we know the amount of plankton right. that's in the sea, then we might know what the temperature of the sea was, mm. um, and we can tell the other types of um, animals that were swimming around with it. We might know mm. sort of what what its competition was. So all things like this can give us a really broad picture of the ecosystem mm. that it was living in, and all this can come from just this one tiny bit of bone. So is there anything we specifically know from this tiny bit of bone about its competition or about any of that sort of um, stuff that you're able to? I appreciate you're not a paleontologist, but that you're able to share with us. Um, no, well, not that I know of. Okay. I'm sure, I'm sure there will be people to be able to tell us, but um, we do have some little teeth here. Oh, from, wow. uh, these are from hyperdont sharks, and these are an extinct species of oh. shark. So we know that these would have been, so this was found in this block, right. in this lump of the matrix. So we know that it was swimming around at the same time. So who knows, you know, they, they wouldn't have competed for the same food because you know, yeah. sharks don't eat, um, don't eat plankton, but um, they were in the same water. They were in the same waters. And, who knows, you know, maybe there would have been some uh, some battles yeah. between Lysicthus and Hyperdont sharks back in the Jurassic. Yeah. Well, that's quite yeah. good to imagine, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. I, I kind of, the other thing I find interesting is we've got, it's a 16 metre fish, yeah. but you're saying it's just eating like really tiny little yeah. bits of things. So it's, it, Why it, is it doing that? Isn't that quite, I don't know, isn't that quite a lot of work for it? What did it, it, it does seem quite a lot of work. Yeah. So it would, this would have been quite a, it would have swum quite slowly, it wouldn't have extended okay. too much in it. Quite similar to um, baleen sharks and yeah. uh, whale sharks that go around uh, go around today. Blue blue whales, you think they're absolutely huge, yeah. but they eat tiny little krill. So there's there's a couple of modern animals that this was really filling the hole because yeah. they didn't exist. We didn't have blue whales, we didn't have uh, whale sharks, we didn't we didn't have all of these things back then. Um, but we did have this, and this kind of it um, 
it co- everything fulfills a role in the in, yeah. the in the food chain. Gets rid of the plankton and produces yeah. more things. Uh, sh- should we take a question or a comment or is yeah, a, what, what have, we got, have we got anything, uh, Hannah? What yeah. have we got? So um, I've heard that you can preserve fossils in a solution of wood glue and water. Is this true? And is it necessary for small fossils found along the Jurassic coast? Ooh, so wow. wood, glue, wood glue and water. Wood glue and water. Are we literally talking wood glue and water here? That's how. Yes, yeah, you... So you can do that. So one of the issues from a conservation point of view might be thinking about how the wood glue might decay. So right. with wood glue, it might it might break down. It might become really sticky, and if it gets if it sort of you know decays and becomes more sticky, then dust can stick to it and obscure your fossil. So I think if you've got if you've found a fossil at home and you and you don't know what to do with it, if you're in the Cambridge area, come to the Cedric Museum of Earth Sciences and bring in your fossil. They're more than happy to look at them. They'll be able to, you know, look at your particular fossil and tell you exactly um, what they'd recommend doing with it. And there are uh, any Earth Sciences Museum around the country would, uh, I'm sure, be happy to do that for you. So I guess what you're kind of saying is that technically sometimes you can do that, but yeah. probably don't do it straight away. It's, it's Actually, all consult a, consult an expert. Yeah, first it's, it's a case again. by case basis. Yeah. So I would I would go go and talk to your local museum. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Uh, any more for any more for the moment? Okay. Well, let's let's take a look at some of these um, other pieces then. So what can you tell me? What more can you tell me about uh, either of these things so here? We have these pieces. These are the bits that were featured in the in the photo that has gone out on social mm. media that I was. Uh, Picking out yeah, under, the, take a look under at the microscope, well. we'll take its, uh, we can take its, and get its lid off. There we go. So these bits, when they they came out of this piece of matrix here, and when they came out, they were in several pieces. I don't know if you can see. There are some, oh, yeah. there are some little break lines going along here. So part of my job was to to reconstruct that, to stick them mm. back together, so that we can see, you can see where the um, piece of the bone like carries on. So I did this with um, a sort of special conservation adhesive. Um, that we know, and this is another one that it's we... Just, it's just wood glue, right? It's, it's ju- just, just wood glue, glue. so um, <laughs> this, this is a special one, and special we, we, glue, know, right. we, know how it, we know how it breaks down, yes. we, know, we know that it's not going to damage, because some, some glues and adhesives, they can uh, produce things that can actually damage the object, which is why it's really important to consult an expert before you do um, anything yourself yes. at home. And, and what, sort of, what, what type of bone is this, or where does this fit into um, it? So I believe that this is part of its fins. Uh-huh. So uh, how we have uh, fingers along our bones, mm-hmm. fish um, have these, these make their mm-hmm. fins. So this would have um, gone along there, right. I believe. And so, so. This, so when you were gluing this together, I mean, tell me more, like, how long does it take to actually like, glue stuck? And things like, is it like a really like, long process, so or is it a really fiddly kind of... It's, it's quite simply making sure it all aligns. So we do it under the microscope yeah. so we can make sure everything so you don't, you know, you know when you're um, a kid and you're sort of, you know, making a model out of lollipop sticks and one yeah. bit goes wonky and then nothing will fit together. Yeah. So you've got to make sure everything aligns perfectly, which is why we do it under the microscope. Mm-hmm. We have sandbags that we uh, that we rest it on so that while mm-hmm. it's setting, it can be nice and supported. We know it's not going to slump, it's not going to yeah. break apart. Um, yeah, so we kind of do it like that. It takes about an hour for it to firm up enough yeah. that you can move it. And then t- after twenty four hours, it will be it's solid enough that then you can pick it up and move it, and it's not gonna it's oh, not gonna yeah. break itself apart. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. Um, so uh, you're gonna have to remind me what's the, the, the Latin name of the oh. fish? Right, remind me again. I'm not, I'm not an expert <laughs> in this sort of thing. It's so, Leedsichthus problematicus. Yeah, that's the bit I was wondering about when you said it first yeah. of all. So problematicus. I have Do we know no, why it's called no that? idea, but I mean, he was um, with with all of his pyrite decay. I think he's. Uh, Little John has caused me a lot. He's caused you a lot of problems. So, uh, so I think I think it's a pity name. But no, yeah. I, I I don't know why it's a uh, why its Latin name came out of that. I'm sure that uh, that someone will be able to answer. Mm. So maybe it, you could put that in the comments if, if you, you know. know yeah. Let us know. I'd love to know. It'd be great. <laughs> oh great. Uh, and so what's the next step for all of these things then? So uh, they've been taken out of the the, the garage. Yeah. Uh, been the museum has uh, oh, got them see. now. You've done lots of uh, conserving of yeah. them. What happens with it now? So now they've gone into the collection where researchers can request to look at them, um, then they can study them, they can maybe write papers about them, things like that. Um, Then they may be going on display at some point. There's a a question mark, maybe sometime in the in the autumn or the winter this year. You might be able to see these these ones, but that's that's not certain yet. So uh, you know, watch this space. Um, Yeah. So so for now, they'll they'll sit nice and safe Mm -hmm. in the in the Sedgwick stores and. um, and available for anyone to use. Ah, great, I see. So uh, there you go. If you do want to see uh, more of these, learn more about this amazing 16 meter bony fish, then uh, it, you might have the chance to uh, see it at the uh, Cedric Museum 
in a few months' time. Uh, but actually, just generally, you should probably go to the Cedric Museum, should yeah, you? Yeah, they've got loads of exciting things. They've oh. got fossils, they've got rocks, they've got minerals, they've got uh, something for everyone. It's and they've got, there's an Ice Age exhibition that's happening in a few months' time. Yeah, as well, yeah, right? so that's kind of sort of maybe sort of September, October ish time. September, so, October ish yeah, time. Can. Okay, uh, and I mean, maybe would that bison be? Yeah, so this this is what the, the bison's going to be going to be part of. So this oh, is right. the, the Ice Age of Cambridge. Oh these, wow! The, these were roaming around. Um, so yeah, you can uh, oh. get up close and personal and see him, see him and all his friends. There you go. So uh, we've come about to the end of our time now. So uh, as I say, uh, head down to the Cedric Museum uh, where you'll be able to see uh, different fossils and things similar to this and learn lots more. Um, but yeah, thanks so much everyone for watching. Stick your questions down below and, and Rian will have a, a look um, a little bit later on and uh, answer any others. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Thank Rian. you, yeah, thank and, you for um, coming to see. Well, it's been, oh, yeah. it's been fascinating. And yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you soon.